टूडे आई उल टक ऑन मिड ब्रेन सिनड्रोम दर सिनड्रोम टू अंडारस्टैंड दर सिनड्रोम उइ शुड अंडारस्टैंड द रिलेटेड क्लिनिकल एनाटोमी अब द मिड ब्रेन दिस इज द ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन अब मिड ब्रेन द एक्जियल सेक्शन अब मिड ब्रेन एट द लेवल अब सुप्रियर कलिकुलस दिस इज द पोस्टोरियर पार्ट एंड दिस इज द एंटोरियर पार्ट अब मिड ब्रेन दिज आर द सुप्रियर कलिकुलस एंड द डरसाल एंड सेंट्रल पार्ट इट इज इट इज एक्विडक्ट अब सिलभियस एंड अराउंड द एक्विडक्ट अब सिलभियस दिस इज द पेरि एक्विडक्टल ग्रे मैटर and in the gray matter anteriorly the third cranial nerve nucleus is located and from the third cranial nerve on each side the fiber of third cranial nerve emerges and get goes anteriorly and very anteriorly this is the red nucleus and as we know this red nucleus is closely associated functionally with this black part this black part is called substantia nigra which is a part of basal ganglia and it is related to synthesis of dopamine and very anteriorly this is the basilar artery and from basilar artery to branch emerges on each side this is called posterior cerebral artery posterior cerebral artery branch of basilar artery that supply the posterior part of the cerebellum now this greenish part is called cerebral peduncle this is cerebral peduncle and through this cerebral peduncle the cortico spinal and cortico bulbar tract go down actually the mid brain can be divided into three part from posterior to anterior the tectum the tegmentum and cerebral peduncle the very important part here is cerebral peduncle through the cerebral peduncle the cortico spinal tract and cortico bulbar tract go down and at certain level these long tract cross to the opposite side and to understand this cross look at here in this picture this is coronal section of our central nervous system this is the cerebrum mid brain pons and medulla oblongata and spinal cord this blue nucleus and from the blue fiber coming from this nucleus is supposed to be the cortico spinal tract cortico spinal tract is goes to the spinal cord and at the lower part of the brain stem it cross to the opposite side it cross to the opposite side and it supply to opposite side uh, le- uh, arm and leg and this black nucleus and with its fiber goes down through the internal capsule and cross at certain level to the opposite side in the brain stem and this is called cortico bulbar tract and this cortico bulbar tract supply the structure in the face and neck now look at this at, at this structure this is the nucleus of third cranial nerve that emerges from the mid brain and this is the nucleus of seven cranial nerve that is located in the lower pons now look at the first image if there is any lesion maybe a stroke vascular lesion or any other lesion abscess or neoplastic lesion in the second image the lesion the here now the question is what structure are involved by these lesions very carefully at first the fiber of third cranial nerve this is the third cranial uh, nucleus that is located at the level of uh, superior colliculus of mid brain 
so third cranial nerve nucleus and its fiber are involved this image the third cranial nerve nucleus involved so the third cranial nerve nucleus of the right side is involved look at here the ipsilateral involvement of third cranial nerve that is the lesion and the involvement is on the same side ipsilateral means same side the second structure involved is the cortico spinal and cortico bulbar tract that is the long tract which come from cortex and goes to the spinal cord and the bulbar part look at here the lesion is here and it involves the long tract the cortico spinal tract that goes to the spinal cord and cortico bulbar tract that involve the bulb so this lesion manifest the problem on the opposite side of the trunk arm legs and face look at here this is the seven cranial nerve nucleus and its upper motor fiber are damaged or involved in this lesion so the seven cranial nerve lesion will be opposite side that is contralateral and the lesion will be upper motor type and as we know in upper motor type of seven seven cranial nerve nucleus only the lower part of the face will be involved and the due to involvement of the cortico spinal tract the contralateral arm and leg will be paralyzed due to involvement of its upper motor fiber on the opposite side so there will be a spastic type of paralysis involving opposite side arm and leg with upper motor type of facial nerve palsy so again to for a summary a structure involved in this lesion third nerve nucleus ipsilateral then cortico spinal tract involvement of the uh, that manifest the contralateral arm and legs and cortico bulbar tract involvement that manifest as upper motor type of facial nerve palsy with deviation of the face so the question is what clinical picture you will find in a patient with waver syndrome at first look at the eyes of your patient the lesion in the right side of the brain in the right eye of the patient the pupil will be dilated and the eye will be fixed with lateral and down gaze as because the lateral rectus is supplied by cisternal nerve and superior oblique muscle supplied by fourth cranial nerve and as the third cranial nerve is paralyzed so eye will be fixed laterally and downwards and people uh, people will be dilated then look at the face of the patient the left side of the face of the patient will be paralyzed and the facial division will be towards the right side and the facial involvement will be only the lower part of the left side and the upper part of the face will be in will be normal and there is no bells phenomena then goes to the arm and leg all the jerk will be exaggerated as because there is upper motor type of palsy so jerk of the left side arm and leg will be exaggerated and quite normal on the right side and the plantar extensor on the left side will be found so this is all about the oeva syndrome clinically you have to correlate to uh, diagnose the oeva syndrome with the finding on the patient's eye 
and opposite sided upper molar type of palsy with facial uh, deviation thank you thank you very much